and we're recording. I'm with uh, Tim, Tim Frost. Uh, Tim, how are you today? No, I'm doing fantastic. No, thanks. Thanks for having me. Excellent. 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 So Tim, uh, well, it's nice to reconnect. Um, I, I usually, as I was mentioning, I kind of do a level set for people in terms of like, you know, how did we meet? Where did we meet? Um, and if I'm not mistaking, I think our paths first crossed in Boost or at uh, in Silicon Valley, right? This is what, 24, I want to say 2016, 2015. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, we were both a uh, part of the, that Boost uh, cohort. Um, you know, I was uh, part of the founding team at, uh, you know, a, a blockchain company called uh, Block Verify uh, while you were there with Unicoin. So it was, uh, <clears throat> it was uh, good and uh, challenging times. At the, <laughs> those years. What is that famous thing? Like chewing glass and staring into the abyss, right? That's what entrepreneurship sometimes feels like. Um, but, but okay, so, uh, you know, I, I was telling you, I recently interviewed Adam Draper and, you uh, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. And, and, you know, one of the things that they always talk about is like this importance of being a cockroach, right, in this industry and like just never dying and always trying new things and figuring out through experience because there's no textbook you can just pick up and, and learn all this stuff, right? It's, it's, it's fairly, uh, fairly new industry. So, you know, you having been in this space for so long, I think is, is in itself a, a tribute to, to, you know, all the hard work you've done. Really excited about this one, Tim. As I was mentioning, you know, one of my main goals is I'm I'm infatuated with people's stories uh, before they get into Bitcoin, after they learn about Bitcoin, how it kind of impacts their trajectory and how their affects their worldview. So, uh, so yeah, maybe with that said, you know, I'd, I'd love to kind of hear your story, Tim. Like, uh, where, where does it begin for you? I guess my my um, I guess I first got involved in uh, with crypto. I guess just. Like a lot of people, I, I was um, I'd seen it in the news, um, just wanted to, how I could get involved, um, <clears throat> started figuring out how I could uh, start uh, trading. So I was actually um, started trading a little bit and then I, I started actually selling coins on eBay a little bit. I had built my little kind of mechanism of never getting a charge back. And so I'd kind of built up this little rhythm and then uh, one day someone asked me, you know, if I could get some sort of a rare coin. And of course, my response was, yes, of course. And then the, the uh, next step I had to do was find out what that coin was and, and how I could supply that coin to, to the market that people wanted to buy it. And then I essentially ended up finding my, my first job in crypto, which was running social media accounts for, for an altcoin in, in 2014. Oh, I think you're on mute now. I lost the volume. Sorry, man. Sorry, that was my bad. I uh, know. So, Tim, I'm curious. What are you? What What did your kind of, I guess, uh, younger days look like? Are you more of a technical guy then? Or are you more like a business guy, or a mixture of both, or uh, are you coming from a completely different scene? No, I, I'm come from a very, uh, I guess, non non technical background. I I'm uh, business and economics is, is what I, I studied in uh, university. Um, I actually. Um, I, I think I've taken a little bit of an unconventional path here. I actually was uh, 10 years as a professional basketball player um, and, and played all over the world. And then um, I guess I, you know, wanted to make a dramatic shift and, and I wanted to move away from uh, sports in general and, and do something that's a completely new challenge in life. And that's kind of when I started dabbling in crypto and decided that, wow, this is, this is cool. This is going to be something that's going to be big. And I, I want to make a career in the space. And so that was started in 2014. And now, um, I guess we're quite a, quite a few years later. Um, so I've, you know, kind of built a, a career, um, kind of early stage fintech companies. Um, you know, when we, when we kind of met in uh, Silicon Valley, I had a, a blockchain anti-counterfeit um, supply chain company. And <laughs> the, the, the hard lessons, right? It was when we moved towards that ah, Bitcoin is nothing. It's all about the blockchain. And then of course I, I got on that train and it was like, well, let's, let's try to build a company in this sector, which I knew nothing about. And, uh, and realizing during that, that process of, you know, you know, trying to, you know, build early stage techs. I mean, this is, this is really before the Ethereum mainnet was launched. So, you, you know, the, the technology back then was, 
I was very, um, very early stage. And so getting meetings with, with different companies uh, trying to explore how, you know, was there, you know, to actually build a product that people would buy. And I think, you know, now we look at these things about six years later, I think people are still trying to figure out how to really um, implement uh, different blockchain technology into uh, traditional industries. So it was, it was good lessons. It was uh, painful lessons. Um, just, and then you start to get all these conversations and you realize that yeah, people are interested in hearing because they're all hearing about blockchain, but uh, you're in hindsight, you're, I mean, you're probably a decade too early on some of this, which is, you know, but at times it's, it's something you might have to experience for yourself. Yeah, man, that's a, uh, that, that's an important, I think, uh, I think that's an important one that that a lot of people, you know, kind of overlook. And so I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Hey, it really fascinated though, Tim. You said you used to be a professional basketball player, so that that, that sounds like fun. Any, um, just curious, what what was it? Was it like a catalyst event that that made you just realize one day that you wanted to switch gears into a different field, or was it an injury, or was it just uh, your love for Bitcoin, or like what kind of led you down that path? It was, it was, it was before that. I mean, I just. I guess, I guess it was more of a personal challenge. Um, you know, my, my whole life was destined to becoming a, a, you know, coach, um, after I was done playing. So after, when I was at the tail end of my career, um, I actually had a, I actually had a job, uh, with, with, uh, it's, it's a entry level job with the San Antonio Spurs and the, in the NBA, which at the time under Greg Popovich was like the best job you could ever get. And, um, and then I, I just had this, this moments where it was like, that was amazing. This amazing opportunity. I'm going to move right in from a player and into right into that coaching kind of career. And I, I just, I just couldn't do it. Like, I, I just absolutely didn't want anything to do with, uh, the sport at that time. And I needed to do something completely different. So, um, all my friends and family thought I was absolutely insane. Um, and then when I started like doing crypto stuff, then they thought I was more insane. <laughs> and now they all think I'm a, a genius. So it's kind of uh, <laughs> how things work out. Nice. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I think we've only met each other a couple times, you know, in, in person, but I do remember that you're very tall. <laughs> so uh, cool, man. So, and, and one of the questions, too, I don't know, as you kind of now that you're, I don't know, six, seven years into this entrepreneurial journey. I'm sure there's probably a lot of differences, but were you able to find similarities between these two worlds? Like, I don't know, teamwork, collaboration, like kind of pushing yourself to the limit. I know it sounds a bit cliche, but I don't, I don't talk to people that actually played basketball professionally. I think just, you know, people who played competitive, uh, competitive sports overall, I, I think they've, they do seem to thrive in, in business. Um, it's, I mean, there's, the only way you can survive or, or thrive is it's perseverance. It's, it's hard work. It's working through issues because I mean, it, everything you're going to do any, I mean, there's a, there's a hundred walls you have to knock down. And so, I mean, the same thing as succeeding as an athlete and, and just keep climbing the ranks and like anything, I mean, you know, as a basketball player, well, you know, everyone would like to be, you know, every small kid who plays basketball would love to play, you know, at the top levels and, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, just to, to build something that that's great is, I mean, that's, that's hard. So, um, so, I mean, I, I love the, the competition. I love the, you know, collaborative spirit. I love team building. Like I, I love all this stuff. So I, my, my personal, I think my success in, in business has been directly related to just the, you know, the, what I've experienced and, and gone through a, as an athlete and, you know, just the, the character it's kind of built for myself. Cool, cool. Very interesting. Very interesting. And then, and then also, um, if you can maybe expand a little bit on the blockchain versus Bitcoin, you know, and, and, and I'll ask why I'll explain why Tim, because one of my goals, because people ask me like, what the hell are you doing with these YouTube videos? Like you're releasing a new one every day. Like, don't you have better things to do? <laughs> and, and, and what I, what I tell people is like, one of my main goals is I want to um, inspire people to build build like to build <laughs> to build on top of bitcoin to build you know in this industry and and to solve problems and so so you know i, I find like uh, obviously these interviews are very enlightening because i'm talking to investors entrepreneurs authors you know i don't know musicians and really trying to come at this this industry from as many angles as possible to give people 
um, different ideas, you know, and, and I think one of the big things we can share is, is sometimes like when maybe things don't go the way we think the world uh, works. Uh, and so curious about kind of the blockchain, Bitcoin, and, 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 and I do remember very clearly you telling me about your project. It was about um, like shipping logistics and using the blockchain for it. And that is one of those examples that like everybody brings up it's like well you know the blockchain could easily be used for shipping because like think about it you have all these parties that don't know each other and they have to trust in each other and they have this beautiful story but where 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 did it maybe fall apart or was it really just a timing thing like you said like maybe it'll just be 10 years later that that eventually all this stuff gets figured out well i mean now i feel like it it is i mean i think we were like I said, a decade too early. And, um, mm. you know, I, I think, you know, overall, I mean, that's, <clears throat> you're starting to see strides made, but I, I think overall, I mean, my, my personal, um, my personal philosophy is, is obviously evolved um, greatly over the years. I mean, I, I, like, I, I maybe don't even subscribe to that in, anymore. I, I think I'm at the, the point. I, I think the, I mean, my personal belief now is, is that the, the killer app of, blockchain and crypto is it's money and um it's probably always been it um there's so many things of, of people have tried to use it for but i'm completely open to the idea and I, I i love people exploring and building every direction and you know i'm sure some great things will, will come out but um you know i think overall i think it's you know i i my philosophy right now is it is it is money um I'm, I'm a huge proponent of everything DeFi that, that's happening right now. And I, I think it's like outside of, of like Bitcoin, I think this is the next real sustainable kind of industry that, that it will, it's, it's here, it's hot, but it's, but it, it's built on, on something very fundamental. Okay. So I, I definitely want to get on to Ethereum, DeFi, but given that's how the main kind of focus of your project um, but I, I want to also go uh, go a little bit in steps in the sense that blockchain, not Bitcoin, is kind of like first step. Bitcoin is the one is like, OK, kind of like, OK, it seems like that's like a big part of your maybe thesis now that, that at least these things are money, if I'm hearing you correctly. And then when I think of DeFi, I think of not money, but I think of like financial applications, perhaps. Right. Decentralized financial applications. Right. So just wanted to tease that apart a little bit. So when you say that. Look, I've realized that you know it's really about money. Um, on the Bitcoin note, again, I know I don't want to like. Uh, I know your project is mostly on on DeFi, but what was it about Bitcoin? Because you've been you've been in this space forever, right? So what what aha moment did you have around Bitcoin that made you go, wait, this money thing is actually being solved and it's being solved at scale? Before you moved on to, okay, now I'm going to start maybe focusing on building you know applications or financial, you know, uh, tools, right? I'm just curious, like on the money note. Well, <clears throat> on that, I mean, I, I guess I, <laughs> I actually don't think Bitcoin as money is necessarily is is you know what's really happened. And I, I was I was listening mm -hmm. to Mark Cuban the other day, and I, I was I was um, <clears throat> I was kind of laughing because you know he was saying that he had accepted a Bitcoin for for ticket sales at, for the Dallas Mavericks, and he was saying something like in like it was all this publicity, and he said no one used it, and so it's it's a i mean it's like it's a store of value um it, it's a i don't know where bitcoin goes down in the history books but i i i think it's i mean it's a it's a speculative asset um you know and i know this is always used it's it's like it, you know it's it's gold it's like digital gold and it it feels like it's more and more the, the case of what this has become right like people see it does have value I mean, Elon Musk, the, you know, maybe the smartest, you know, the wealthiest man in the world. I mean, obviously, if when he gets it, like the reality is like, you know, you know, it, 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 people get it now. Right. And, and so <clears throat> it's probably going to have its own classification. I, I you know, I, I'm always interested to see how, how this shapes out when to see what that looks like kind of long term. But, um, you know, money should be used. Right. So um, people don't usually use bitcoin for for buying and selling or buying they might they might sell stuff and receiving it because they they want that and they, they are interested in the, the speculative asset but um i <clears throat> i'm still I, I still when you see a run like this right and it's you you see the majority of people who are coming into the market right now 
they're buying $50,000 Bitcoins because they think they can sell it later on for a hundred thousand dollars in their, you know, in their, their fiat currency. Right. And so I, I know that there's the, there's, there's many different classifications in, in the industry. And I, I think that's, that's great. And what's, what makes it special and what never, um, what always makes it exciting. I mean, there's never, there's never a dull moment in, in this industry. So it's um, yeah. part of that. I'm just excited to watch, watch where it goes. Okay, so so then yeah, fair enough. So then when um, and by the way, I, did, I was talking to Adam as well about Ethereum, and it was fascinating to hear kind of their um, you know thought process and how they. I, I actually I had asked Adam about like, well, why do you think ICOs even you know kind of blew up the way that they did, and and in general like just the Ethereum community, and and he did explain he's like you know when you tell crypto people you can't do something, they go out and figure out how to do it. So the fact that raising money for a crypto business back in the day was was difficult. Uh, a lot of these guys kind of went out and did it, but that, that kind of faded, right? We saw that come and go, but now a couple of years ago, I don't know exactly what the time, what, 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 what kind of lit this, this new DeFi thing on fire, maybe compound, or I don't know which one exactly, but maybe, maybe talk to people about, um, cause, cause like, I, I don't talk, even though I, obviously I'm very familiar with Ethereum. I don't talk a lot about it, but like, I'd love to hear kind of how, what you're, you know, coming to Ethereum moment was, and when did you start going, wait, hold on, this, this could be something really big. Um, and I could, you know, build on top of it. Well, I think I really uh, dismissed it, especially after the, the ICO market had really kind of imploded. Um, and, you know, I think just the, the sheer insanity, I think was the, the big catalyst on that. This, the, the, the amount of money that was being raised um, was just, it was kind of irresponsible and, and sustainable. And so, you know, I guess I, I had, I would say I'd, I had pretty much uh, dismissed it. Um, then I, about a year ago, I, I, I was on a couple panels and I was, you know, working in, in more of the kind of this Eki bank front and, and more kind of traditional banking side. And I was on a, a few DeFi panels and then I, I, um, well, it was, it was very interesting. And then I was, you know, started to read it. And of course, it's, you know, every, every week, more and more people are, are you know, putting stuff to you and, and just, so finally, I started to uh, pay attention. Um, uh, one of my my co-founders at Yield, uh, he was actually found out he was actually living uh, ten minutes away from me, and um, he got stuck there randomly during uh, COVID. And I, I started meeting up with him all the time, and then we started talking about he was I mean, he went way full full DeFi. And then okay, so the first week we started meeting up and, and talking about this, and then I. I was like, okay. And then I, I started just going down this and, and we just would just spend like all day, every day, like just, you know, I was reading everything, everything I could. Um, he was showing me all these exciting things. And then we just started putting ideas together of like, wow, this is, so it's, you know, it's a, it's a full like financial economy happening on chain. Like, it's like, wow, Ethereum is, I guess that was really the moment then I was like, finally, like, oh my God, Ethereum is, is becoming what it what it was kind of promised to be and like now you can start to, to see it so um i guess that's the that's the moment i, I think for my and what what year is this you said about a year ago or so right <laughs> this is about a year ago yeah yeah so pretty pretty recent and, and then okay so maybe i'll try and take a stab at this and correct me if i'm wrong but like i think i mean this is this is not my description but i think this was like vitalik or someone's description um well the world computer one i think a lot of people heard about but one that I kind of liked, but it's probably not super accurate, which was that if Bitcoin is a calculator, then Ethereum is a computer type of deal. If, if Bitcoin can do plus minus, you know, subtraction addition, whatever, really easily and can do money, uh, Vitalik's vision was how do I create a Turing complete, um, you know, a programmable blockchain, a blockchain that you can build any sort of application on. And the reason I know some of this is because he's from Toronto or he built it in Toronto. Actually, I saw it with my own eyes. And so I've been probably one of the, the kind of uh, harshest critics, or at least I feel of the project, right? Mm whether you're talking about the pre-mine, whether you talk about how centralized it is, whether you talk about, you know, proof of stake versus proof of work, whether you talk about the DAO, whether you talk about, you know, there's been a lot of hiccups, you know, but, but if you stand back from the perspective of like, you know, a freedom loving person um, from someone who believes in free markets, uh, you know, people should be allowed to do what they want to do. And, you know, 
I, I mean, net, is it been negative, positive? I think the jury's still out, but the fact that Ethereum has brought so many new ideas to the ecosystem, whether it be lending, insurance, you know, it's like all these different, you know, exchange, uh, all these different things and, 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 and doing it, doing and, and, and enabling decentralized exchanges to happen as just one basic function, I think is, is noble, right? Like if you're a Bitcoiner, if you're a person who believes in freedom, yep. we, you know, in India, at least we've seen <clears throat> how challenging it can be to dealing when dealing with banks. And we're still, you know, kind of fighting that for good fight, if you will. Um, <clears throat> but all these types of fights also led me to believe that, you know what I mean? That, that there will be others out there like yourselves who are, who are looking at kind of that next stage next evolution um okay so so maybe maybe if you want to maybe explain a little bit about i don't know like what 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 is yield how did you guys you know kind of iterate upon this idea and, and what problem are you solving well yeah absolutely so during this this uh i guess this DeFi quest uh, we it was it was one of these things that was so exciting and and by the way I, i'm a I still have a difficult time to really try to explain it or if, what is really happening, right? And but you can kind of see it. Um, you can see all the components to it, right? And, and decentralized exchanges is the the, the, the the core of everything, right? Um, and it was just incredible of, of how they've figured out how to be able to provide liquidity to these decentralized exchanges and and what ultimately that that um, that can become. And so uh, going down this, and we, you know during this this whole learning curve and i was like i was trying to explain this to people and i was like my god i i, I people are looking at me like i'm what are you talking about you're, you're speaking like an alien here and i was like okay and then we started to okay well here's the thing right and you can it's this is crypto right especially anything that's decentralized you're going to have a lot of issues with it right the, the complexity um the reality is like really do you do you need to be able to code or really understand what's really happening just to participate into this new uh, emerging financial kind of ecosystem. Uh, there's going to be a lot of, well, bad actors out there. I mean, anytime that there's, there's, well, I guess, internet money out there, I mean, naturally people are going to figure out or try to figure out how to kind of take advantage of, of people. And um, well, obviously when we kind of touched on, Ethereum is full of holes. And one is the, the biggest thing that's plaguing the industry right now is the is the bare to entry, just the, the sheer amount of cost. So, so it's like, okay, well, people have to have a large amount of capital to participate in, in DeFi, um, you know, and everything that's happening, where do you go? Who do you trust, right? So it's like, okay, well, can we create a FinTech to actually give people access to this uh, decentralized finance kind of evolution, right? And in the end, it's about providing yields. And so to take us down this process of, of this month, we started saying, okay, can we, can we create a fintech company that is in the end that we could uh, take in client deposits, uh, crypto, you know, crypto deposits, um, fiat deposits, et cetera, and be able to take that capital and actually deploy that safely, securely into uh, DeFi protocols and, and how would we do that? So that's, that's kind of a little bit of the journey of, of you know what we went through to to kind of where we're going and um you know we said we we launched um uh, last friday um we, we got about the first eight thousand users on board now and it's it's really it's really been a uh, pretty pretty mad much madness right now um just so many people coming in and naturally any and you've you've launched early stage and, and or a startup with Onacoin. all those little um little tech issues you kind of deal with and then okay, how do we support this? And obviously the goal is how do we bring hundreds of thousands of people and, and ideally millions of people into, you know, into crypto and, and with access to, to DeFi and do it very safely. So. Hey, hey, um, hey Tim. So I, again, I'm not super uh, not as knowledgeable as you are on, on this stuff. Right. But, but I have been, I'm not going to lie. I've been following some of it. Uh, you know, when you talked about liquidity earlier and, and decentralized exchange, the name that came to mind was Uniswap. I think that was like huge last year. Um, and, you know, they had this like AMM type of clever way of figuring out how to do liquidity, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, but what is yield? So yield is a place. Is it like Uniswap? Is it kind of like a place where you can exchange tokens? Is that one of the functions we, or what is it? We are, I would say we are a UX to, to DeFi is where we're trying to, um, the people that, that can go directly to, to curve, to balancer, to Uniswap that, 
um, are you know going directly to to the protocols and and you know understand what they're doing, uh, they are not our kind of client base. Um, our kind of client base are the ones that just like just this you know um, take our crypto or take our fiat and 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 give us you know give us access to this. So there's the the two types of worlds, right? There's the not my coin, not my keys, not my coins. And there's the people that say, what are keys? And so those people that that don't want all that, that kind of burden of entering it and the complexity and, and being able to manage their own their own risks, um, that's kind of the client base where we're going after. It's more like a Coinbase, kind of a Binance type of, of clientele that we that we want to be able to give access to this this new world. Fascinating, fascinating. And is is the is a Dex really the kind of the central element, or because I think what you were telling me the last time we spoke months ago, it was kind of an ecosystem of different solutions, or is it is it mostly just the Dex for now? <clears throat> well, it, it is. It's it's a it's a variety of strategies, but you know a lot of it is well. Our, our primary strategy right now is is built around Curve, um, and there's interesting. You know, I'd have to bring my my DeFi team on and go really really deep into to why and we're there, but. Essentially, we, you know, we, our job is to kind of understand everything that's happening, and then we are building kind of rails into different protocols. But okay, okay. Well, I won't, I won't push you too hard on it, but I, I do know Curve quite well. I've, uh, I've tinkered Good. with it, and uh, but from what I understand, it's more like a stable coin dex, right? Is that, is that correct, or, or did you guys? Our, our first fund is, yeah, our first fund is a stable coin, a fund. Uh, so we have an Ether fund and a, and a Bitcoin fund uh, coming. And then the coming weeks as well. Interesting. And when you say Bitcoin fund, because <clears throat> I've been hearing as well. Um, in fact, there's a project out of Toronto or out of this area here um, called Badger. I don't know if yep. you've been following these guys, but uh, but they went from like zero to billions of dollars AUM, this and that, just in, in a very short period of time. And from what I understand, what they were doing is they're taking Bitcoin and putting it on the Ethereum network so that people can get you know returns on their on their Bitcoin. Um, I have a lot of concerns, like personally, I don't know if I would be courageous enough to do it, but it's like, if you're willing to put money on an exchange, this is decentralized. So I could see how people could uh, justify that this would be safer in, in some ways. The fee thing confuses me because I'm pretty sure Vitalik was criticizing Bitcoin about Bitcoin's fees like a couple of years ago. And now it's like, people say it's like a hundred dollars or something to just do a simple, a simple thing. Do, do, do you see that issue being resolved? I mean, like, cause this isn't for the masses, right? This is for like the super elite or something. <laughs> well, we, we don't see it being um, resolved anytime, anytime soon. And that's, that's been a big motivation of what we're, we're building. So we, Interesting. Essentially, we we have now eight thousand clients. Um, you know, every every day there's a lot of capital coming in, of people investing into uh, to the DeFi fund that we are now operating, and we are able to kind of aggregate and batch transact. So, um, so you you are completely correct. Um, you know, kind of DeFi now is is really it's it's unprofitable unless you're actually using kind of significant capital. Um, so as I said it is to kind of to go through like a complete yield farming strategy could cost you many hundreds of dollars at the moment. And so that's kind of what it is. We allow like the little guy to kind of get access um, to this because while we are kind of aggregating what we see in the near future of thousands of people's um, transactions and, and, and using it and kind of, I guess uh, that's, we see as, as getting, giving people access. And, Interesting. Um, uh, yep. Yeah. And we are, we're very interested. So on the Bitcoin fund, uh, we, we are very interested in, in Badger. So we, we have test funds in, in Badger. Um, our, our DeFi team is, is quite enthusiastic about um, everything that that's kind of, these guys are, are building and different. So what it is, I mean, if you're going to, you know, participate in DeFi with Bitcoin, I mean, you, you need to wrap Bitcoin. And so um, I, I can, it's a new concept. I mean, the, the, the amount of AUM and then wrap Bitcoin is growing by the day. So it seems like it is slowly um, catching on of people that you know want to be able to earn yields against their their bitcoins. Question for you, um, and maybe I think I know the answer to this, but was there a reason you guys didn't go down the building on top of Bitcoin kind of like RSK angle and chose the Ethereum? Is it just because that's where most of the action is in terms of trades and volume and all that? Is that why you guys went that way, or is that more a question for your technical guys? 
No, it's. Uh, I think at the the moment, it's the the, the main. Uh, I mean, it's the main opportunity. I mean, there's there's the avalanches, there's the the polka dots, there's many things that are that are coming, um, and and those are, are quite interesting. But I think for for what we're doing, yeah, we're. I think Ethereum is the only place to be um, presently at, which with many opportunities coming. Excellent. Okay, so we talked a little bit, Tim, about your story. Hey, were you a computer geek growing up? Or were you just playing ball? <laughs> did you have any, did you have was, any infatuation? What was your first computer? I, I was not a computer geek. I, I think I'm probably an outlier in this, this space. I was, yeah. I was a, I was a jock. Um, <laughs> I, I got my first personal computer in when I, when I went to college, um, I was lucky enough to have guys on the hall that, that actually were able to really teach me on, on properly how to, uh, to use a computer at least. So, uh, but you know, I, I yeah, so I'd say that's where I'm at. I, I'm, I'm very fascinated. I, I try to keep up, but, you know, there's the, I guess the, the tech guys will run circles around me. So. <laughs> um, okay, so Tim, I, like I said, I, I like, I loved uh, hearing about, you know, your, your story. I didn't know you were a professional basketball player. Definitely, uh, it's all come, it's all it's like six cents, you know, the end of the movie where it all comes together. It's like, oh, wait, that explains it. <laughs> this guy's like twice my height. Uh, but that that's super cool, man. It, it, it speaks to maybe, you know, your your mindset as well, because I do think that, that the building, you know, I, I always say that um, intelligence is like kind of the bare minimum that you need to even like do something in this space. I, I, I actually put a lot of weight on courage. And uh, I don't know, it's one of those like variables that I think people don't really take into consideration when they're looking at business partners or, you know, or just themselves. But I feel like this is one of those spaces where you need to really kind of like do some deep, you know, soul searching, you need to know who you are. And then because like you said, everyone's going to think you're, you're nuts. Um, everyone's going to think you're crazy. And so being able to wake up every morning and convince yourself that you're not crazy is crazy. <laughs> Um, so I loved your story. Uh, it was fascinating to hear about yield. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I wish you the best of luck, man, because I do, I, I'm not going to lie. I am very, I'm very infatuated with this space. I keep an eye on it. I'm not, uh, you know, personally like hugely invested in it, but I, I read as much as I can and it's fascinating. So let's maybe shift gears. I know you, you only had like an hour for me today. So, um, the, the, the third question I had for you was, what is one truth that you hold to be, you know, true that most others in Bitcoin would disagree with you on? Okay, this is, I think this will be a, this is going to be completely, um, I think something that, that people want to agree with. So I, I believe that there is a, a massive future in the, in uh, just cryptocurrency and it's just going to continue to grow and grow and become more commonplace in our, our future but i for some reason i've always believed that that there will be a point that bitcoin doesn't exist anymore um in our in our lifetime so um i think that the majority of the industry just they think it'll just march on for forever I can't tell you what that event will be, but I, I feel like there will be eventually a day that it doesn't exist anymore. What makes you feel that way? I mean, now that you know you're what six, seven years in into this industry, have it really? Uh, I, I mean, Bitcoin kind of has had a very high uptime, and uh, it only seems like it's getting stronger and more I, resilient. But curious why you think that? I think uh, I don't know quantum computing, um, something of, of a technical kind of issue that, that ultimately a Bitcoin can't, you know, overcome. Um, and that I said, it may be five, 10, 20, 50 years into the future, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, for whatever. And I'm going to get a lot of criticism. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll hit you with mine. Uh, but mine is, is that it's open source. Is it's open source and quantum computing is something that takes years, decades to like research and understand and uncover. And so as my, my thinking is that, I, and again, I could be just drinking the Kool-Aid here too. So I <laughs> to take it with a grain of salt. But what I've been kind of sold on is, is that, you know, as we start seeing these threats emerge, it's a matter of switching out, you know, a tiny piece of code within the Bitcoin kind of, you know, protocol or whatever. And, and if, if, he, if all the Bitcoiners were like, oh my God, we're going to get screwed by quantum, 
they would just upgrade the network because that, because no one wants to get screwed. Um, but you know, anything could go wrong. So uh, who knows? Who knows? The future is uh, is not determined. Um, okay, but I like that as a contrarian belief. I, I think that'll get you know a lot of people uh, stirred up. <laughs> Um, Tim, a couple of other kind of a bit tangential, somewhat extraneous questions, but things that I don't know, I find interesting. Do you have any thoughts around um, kind of AI, like artificial intelligence, or is that something that you're not really uh, fascinated by or think about? It's just something that's like a, more like a buzzword nowadays, but uh, but I'm always curious to, to ask Bitcoiners about their crypto people, what their uh, take on AI is. Uh, you know, I think you and I talked about that last time we, we, we talked. Um, I'm, you know, I, I, it's fascinating. It's a fascinating subject, but um, I'm not a, I, I've never really went, went that far down, down that path. So. Fair enough. So I've always enjoyed talking to you about it though. So. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 we'll, we'll maybe uh, do a pass on that one. Um, you know, you know, one other topic, it's not like squarely kind of in the Bitcoin scene, but I feel like it's super relevant. And I do bring it up, um, Tim, is, is that anxiety, anxiety, you know, that word anxiety, um, I, I'm bringing it up mainly because, like I said, my theme is really like building on Bitcoin. It's about, you know, courage. It's about like breaking through walls that, you know, most people wouldn't even dare to, to, to approach. And so, um, you know, with this kind of COVID thing for the last year and a half, everyone's stuck at home, no human interaction. It's like, it's got a lot of people kind of in a funk. Um, so Tim, curious, do you have uh, like a protocol, a routine that, that I don't know, when you're feeling that you do, I don't know, do you, do you work out, do you uh, meditate, journal, a little bit of yoga? It's like, how do you, like when you're feeling a bit off, how do you do a quick reset and then kind of, you know, get back to work? Yeah, I think uh, working out actually, that's the, I think the ultimate cure. I, um, I find myself unbalanced if, if I'm not. And yeah, I, I think the, I would, I would say um, the, the, the start of COVID was, it was, there was a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty. You know, you, you have a lot of businesses and, and, you know, what's going to happen and, you know, this, this entire change. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the future is is quite is quite bright. I mean, I know it's a lot of people in a lot of difficult situations now, but um, I don't know. I feel like the 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 future is is, is it's going to be very bright. Um, you know, this, this COVID will will pass all this, and the the economy will will rebound, and and you know, people will, I guess, enjoy more. I mean, I think we all can't wait to just go travel freely again, and so. You gotta be like, uh, you don't you know what is it they say? You don't know what you're missing until until it's gone, right? So, yeah, um, yeah. The world are you, is are very you, small. Are you yeah. big into traveling? Do you travel? Do you have like a favorite place or something? Well, I haven't traveled in, in a year, but um, I mean, I you know, of course, just just being a, an entrepreneur, um, uh, over the traveling all the world, you know, on a, on a weekly basis is is quite normal, and um, that's. That has been difficult because that's been taken away, but it's it's also kind of made us refocus on on different things. But um, you know, I have my my family in the states, and it used to be just like you're you're you know you're twenty hours away from you know from seeing them with a day's notice, right? And so it was it was so easy and accessible, and and now it's it's you know it's all video calls, right? And it's just that has been eliminated. It's been a it's been a year, and it's been quite a quite a, oh, I guess, a, I guess it's changed us. I, I think for, it's probably changes for, for good. Mm, mm, yeah. I think, uh, interesting time. Interesting time. So Tim, uh, maybe just in, you know, a bit in, in terms of like to bring this one home, uh, where do people plug into your, you know, kind of consciousness? Do you, do you tweet often? Are you blogging? Do you, do you run our YouTube channel? And the second thing is kind of where, where, where do they learn more about yield if they want to, um, learn more about it? I'm, you know, I'm not a big guy on social media. Um, I'm, you know, this is, um, I, I'm been building a lot of companies over the last years, but I, I'm usually just a, a guy grinding be behind the scenes. And uh, so this is my my first company I've built when I've actually been the, the public face of. And uh, it's been a, it's been a, that's been a 
learning curve as well. Um, so more and more, I'm trying to get out there. I, I just started up a, a, a Twitter account um, recently and uh, trying to keep that active. And, uh, you know, I'm, what's, the, what's the Twitter you, account? Can you share it or are you shy to? <laughs> it's, no, no, absolutely. Let's get I'm you some followers. It right. It's uh, <laughs> Tim, Tim Yield at Tim Yield. Love it. So, yeah, so we're, we're there. Um, but I'm, I think, more more active on LinkedIn. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great place to, to connect and, and share ideas and uh, get feedback. So um, you can always, always find me there and, and please reach out. Um, as far as Yield, uh, Yield.app. Um, we're we're live and operational. Um, unless you're an American citizen, you can you can sign up and uh, start start using the app um, today. You know, I'd love to get your feedback and uh, love to you know hear hear what you want and um, hear what we're doing wrong. So appreciate all the feedback. Excellent, Tim. So I think that was that was pretty pretty good, man. If there's is there anything else you want to share in closing about the project, about anything else we talked about, or should we bring this one to an end? No, it, it's great to it's great to connect. Um, you know, I said I, I love to see what you guys have overcome in, in India with with Unicoin and everything. So it's such a such a inspiration of, of you know guys have been fighting so so long to, to see you know all the that perseverance to to go out on your side. So it's uh, yeah, it's yeah. Cool. It seems a bit. Uh, I know it seems a bit gloomy right now in India, but. Um... But people should 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 have hope and and they should do what they can to to continue fighting because um because I think we're about to turn a corner or we'll see here but uh but but you know I think I think I think you know this this space like I said it's 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 not just about trying to explain it to your family and your friends I mean it's like the whole world is kind of to some extent against you you know now with guys like Elon and Jack Dorsey and stuff waking up to to Bitcoin in a big way it makes you know, the, the, the pitch a bit easier. It's like, you don't have to go through the whole song and dance. It's like, if you heard of Elon Musk, <laughs> um, Hey Tim, man, I really, I really enjoyed this time with you. Um, if you want to come back again, we can jam about India or how yield is doing, you know, current events. The first one, I try and kind of keep it a bit formulaic in terms of like the storyline and all that. So I appreciate you sharing that. And uh, yeah. And then let's, uh, let's, like I said, let's pick up the thread again, whenever you're free. Okay, oh, thanks. I'm gonna, thanks a lot, Sonny. Awesome. I'm going to kill the recording. Just hang around for 30 seconds here.